Getting ready to change the color on a crack pot. Coming up. Warning, if you think this video will show you how to do a proper spray job. You've come to the wrong place, mate. Be warned. Hey, how's it, folks? And welcome back. And a special welcome to the new guys. Thanks for joining us. So how do you like my cardboard bonnet? I thought I would save some weight, give it a bit of a slant so we can go faster. <laughs> so yeah, today I'm going to paint Crackpot. Um, in previous videos I removed the tilt nose, took off the load bin in the back, put the 351 engine in. There's some challenges waiting for me there, hidden under my cardboard bonnet. <laughs> but I thought for a change of pace, I'm going to paint the truck. I would have liked it if she had patina. This is what it is. This is what I've got. So I'm going to try a fake patina thing. So yeah, let's see how that turns out, eh? So yeah, there's a lot of oaks out there that's uh, against fake patina, and I can understand that. It's not the real thing. But um, yeah, not all of us are blessed to find trucks which got nice patina. Like I said, this is what I've got. I have seen some fake patina jobs out there that's actually done very well. So I'm going to give it a shot. So only one way to find out. So I'm just flattening the existing paintwork with some paper I've got here, I think, what is this, 120, <laughs> it's quite coarse. Um, I'm going to leave all these original cracks and craze marks and even the rust spots and the chips exactly as they are. Um, I'm not going to bother to fill and fair or anything. We do want, I do want all this character, so I'm just going to blow straight over it. I'm going to follow a few steps, you're going to see what I'm going to do. There was a saw spot here on the door, so I put the plaster on. Now it's much better. I just blew some rattle can primer over my band-aid strip here. So it'll take a while before it rusts. <laughs> so the paint guys say preparation is key, except in my case. <laughs> I'm leaving these spots exactly as they are. I've just flattened straight over it just a little bit. I'm not even putting in too much effort. So these spots are obviously going to bleed through my paint. Well, that's what I want. Here on the back of the cab, same story. I'm going to leave it exactly as it is and just blow paint straight over it. I haven't bought a local newspaper in years. Um, in my mind, in my opinion, the only thing it's really good for is for masking. And I do see that the Mossel Bay municipality is putting out an invitation to tender. Oh look, here's a baddie. <laughs> If I can translate that from Afrikaans, it means a uh, suspected scammer has been apprehended. Oh look, you can buy a bottle of Douglas Green wine for only 38 rands. To my American friends, that's about two and a half dollars. Not bad, eh? Hey, De Villiers, stop reading the newspaper and get on with your job. Yeah, I'm thinking back to days long gone by now. <laughs> When I was also trying to do decent spray jobs, chasing the whole trailer queen scenario. And it was filling and fairing and sanding your life away. And then tack rags and damping down the floor and all of that kind of shit. Just to keep the dust away. <laughs> what I'm doing now is I'm pu pushing the dirt around a little bit with a damp rag before I blow on my paint. So I'm just going to use some satin black first, old-fashioned duco. One part, I'm not going to worry about 2K and all of that fancy stuff. I'll leave that to the shiny boys. There's one thing I cannot understand. How in 2021 have they still not come up with a paint and design where you don't have the stupid reach 
that catches all the paint. I mean, that's beyond me. It's always just a mess. I know there's all these tricks with masking tape and all of that stuff, but I mean, still, you would have thought by now they would have come up with a better design. What the hell? And into my cheap Barber Freight style spray gun we go. There it goes. So yeah, paint was a little thick, so I just thinned it down a bit. Not that it matters. It just gives me more effect. The thing is leaking somewhere. Ah man, bloody blood was not on properly. Ah. Okay, I've got some new black spots on my floor. Hopefully my lid is better now. Let's try again. So I'm wondering how many comments I will get from people telling me to wear a mask. I know I'm supposed to wear a mask. So don't do this at home. I can't find a bloody thing. There's a lot of dust up here. <laughs> That's good enough, what the hell? Dust plus paint makes a nice anti-skid surface. Hoppa! Hey, and you know what? All that nonsense about overspray and the rest of it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Right, my gun is reloaded. Let's go. Okay, like I so step one is done. Doesn't look too bad from a distance, and if you don't shine a light on it to see all the dents or go too close to see all the defects in the paint, so it needs to be a long distance. I was briefly thinking of maybe leaving it satin black, but now nah, I've already got a black thing standing out there. So this black here is a step one. It's going to be followed by step two now. Okay, here goes step two. So I've purposefully mixed the paint a little thick um, to get some orange peel. Hopefully it will help me with my effects down the line. Freaking hell, now that's not a pretty sight to me. I'm going to have to get on with step three as soon as I can. <laughs> Extract the pan going full blast, so no worries there.
some more body parts that is waiting for the treatment. <laughs> so that was step three. We've gone from white to black to red oxide to this aquamarine color. Um, step four, that's going to be fun. Can't get into that now. I want the paint to cure properly and dry a bit more, so I'm going to give it a few days. I mean, this day is kind of almost over as well. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching my special tutorial <laughs> on how not to do a spray job properly. I mean, everything is wrong with it. Bad preparation, no sanding between coats, orange peel, overspray, etc., etc. <laughs> but all of those mistakes were actually done on purpose because it's going to help us to get some nice patina effects. So for some more rad rod fun and seeing how this is going to change and get patina and who knows what else, <laughs> there might be some surprises popping out. So I will see you next time when we get into step four. Until then, have a good one.